There is a garden, there is a city, and there's a kingdom of God. And it is beautiful, and he is bringing it right now into our midst. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. We're really glad that uh, you're here. Hey, this is like the end of our family series that's gone for about six weeks. But two weeks ago, we transitioned to a bit of a Christmas theme. And today we're finishing up with a, a, an idea about remembering and the call to remember well. So uh, my friend and colleague Diana and I are going to share this morning on uh, what does remembering really look like and feel like and what does scripture say about it? So we're going to start with uh, some fun questions, okay? I think everybody's going to be, be able to relate to them. So here's, here's one. Have you ever said, man, where are my keys? Or you ever think, oh, did I leave the oven on? Or how about this? Can, can somebody call my phone because I can't figure out where my phone is? I do this one all the time. Think, oh, did I shut the garage door? Okay, you get the idea. We are called to remember and sometimes we don't remember. So listen to this passage from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is a very important book about remembering. Listen to this. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. So if you have a Bible, you can turn to it, or if you have it on your app, uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 7 says this. This is Moses speaking. Remember the days of old. Consider the generations long past. Ask your father, and he will tell you, your elders, and they will explain to you. So this morning, we want to do that. Uh, we actually want to do three things in this call to remember. So uh, here's, here's kind of where we're going today. Number one, uh, why is memory so important in, in a person of faith? Okay, that's number one. Number two is, why is forgetting uh, not good and remembering takes effort? Why is that? And then third, and perhaps most importantly, how do we remember redemptively? How do we remember redemptively? As people of faith and following Jesus, how, how, what, what does our memory look like to be remembering redemptively? Okay, so that's where we're going today. So uh, first part uh, about memory and why it's so important to, to remember. And there's a th kind of three reasons for this. One is God remembers and God calls us to remember. God remembers, God calls us to remember. Here, if you have a, a Bible, again, you can turn to the Psalms. The Psalms are full of this, okay? Uh, Psalm 25 says this, Psalm 25, 6 and 7. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth. Funny, some things we don't want God to remember, right? And my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. M listen to that. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are always good. Psalm 25. So the, the word remember is, shows up in the Old Testament more than 200 times. Many of those times it shows up in the book of Deuteronomy and in Psalms. Now, the book of Deuteronomy, it's one of the five books of Moses. It's uh, part of the Torah, the first five books. So it's a very, very important part of the Hebrew Scriptures. And Deuteronomy means the retelling of God's story or the retelling of God's deeds. The entire book is a series of sermons by Moses telling the people of Israel, remember who God is, remember what He's done. See, the, the very, very core of this is you and I must remember who God is, what He has done, how faithful He is. That is the, pr the primary core purpose of memory, of remembering. That's what we remember first and foremost. God remembers, He calls us to remember, and especially He calls us to remember who He is and what He's done. Okay, that's the first thing, first part of this. The, the second part of uh, why memory is so important is it gives us perspective. It gives us perspective. Here, listen to uh, Psalm 77 for a moment. Uh, again, the, the writer says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. Hey, I got good news for everybody. Ready? The year 2020 is not the extent of our existence. 
the year 2020 is not the, the, the extent of our existence. There was a 2019, there will be a 2021. 2020 has been hard, right? And a lot of us have kind of gotten tunnel vision. And if that's all our memory was uh, of a pandemic and all this kind of stuff, um, our, our perspective would be so, so, so limited. You see, but the book of Deuteronomy and other places in scripture, they are books of perspective. They, they tell us where we've come from and, and, and also where we're going. It, they tell us of God's past faithfulness and our hope for the future. You, you get that? The, it, memory tells us God's past faithfulness to his people and thus it gives us hope for the future. It gives us perspective about what's going on in the world and in our lives. Hey, let me uh, give you an example of this, a personal example of this. Uh, many of you know, or some of you know, that um, my dad passed into eternity a little bit more than five years ago. He was 90 years old. Uh, he had come to faith very late in his life. Uh, he really finished well because of that. And I have great joy in my heart about my dad uh, being with the Lord, and it's just really awesome. But even more so, when my brother and I interact, we remember my dad, and we remember him in a very sp a specific way. My dad was an auto mechanic, okay? Very good auto mechanic. So whenever our car broke down or we looking to buy a car or something like that, but all of my brothers and I would talk, call to my dad and say, hey, what do you think about this car? Or my muffler fell off or whatever. And my dad would always give us advice and input and whatnot. Well, now my dad's gone, but when anything happens with the car, my brother Randy and I call each other and we ask each other about this. And what do we do? We remember our dad. And we remember how he connected with us relationally in those moments. And sure, we have uh, an ounce of, of, of loss and sadness there because we just miss our dad. But we also, that memory brings relationship. It brings connection. It brings connection to our past, but also to our, each other right now. And you know, that's how it can be uh, at, at Christmas time. Now, as, as Pastor Brian said last week, look, at this time of year, let's all be honest. Some of the relationships that we're in or that we deal with are hard. That's just a reality. But some of them also are really beautiful and redemptive. And so though, that's what happens as we remember. It connects us not only to God, but to each other. So that's point number one, why memory is so important for each and every one of us. And if we know then that memory is so important to God, it's so good for our perspective and our relationships and connection, then why is it so difficult for us? I think maybe part of the reason that remembering is referenced so much throughout scripture is because it's easier for us as human beings to forget. If you think back to the story of the Israelites that we mentioned earlier, you can read all about through the book of Exodus the things that God was doing for that people, the incredible things that he, he rescued them from Egypt, from the land of slavery. He guided them out. He parted the waters of the Red Sea so that they could walk through unharmed. And even as they wandered in the desert, we see God time and time again providing for them, guiding them, leading them. At the end of Exodus chapter 15, there's this beautiful song of praise that the people are singing to the Lord for everything that he's done for them. But then you move into chapter 16, and it seems like the Israelites have forgotten all about the incredible things that God did for them. They're complaining that they had it better off in Egypt. They say in chapter 16, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Really? So the people get hungry and all of a sudden slavery doesn't sound like such a bad option. That is a dramatic instance of forgetfulness. It didn't take much and it did not take long for the Israelites to forget and move on from all the incredible things that God had done for them. But before we cast blame too quickly, have we ever experienced anything like that? It can be really easy when things get hard to remember the good that we've experienced. In psychology, the whole concept of forgetting is about the failure of memory retrieval. And then remembering, on the other hand, is the conscious and active retrieval of that memory. 
So forgetting is passive, remembering is active. Forgetting will happen naturally if we let it. Remembering takes effort. The image that you're gonna see on the screen right now is the upright piano that I learned to play on. It's still in my parents' living room. And I learned to play the piano when I was around eight years old. And man, when I started playing piano, it was rough. I can't tell you the number of times that a practice session ended in tears or fights with my mother. So all you parents who have ever had kids go through music lessons, God bless you for your patience. It's not easy to learn something that doesn't come naturally to us. And even though we're created to know and remember who God is, the brokenness of our sin can make that difficult for us. God calls us to remember him, but we need to have this buildup of muscle memory in order to do that. You know, the more that I played and practiced piano, the easier it became for me. The more that my fingers kind of started to recognize the shapes and the movements that they were supposed to make, even before I understood the theory behind it. God's created us to be able to form habits out of what we practice. And so how much more so with our minds, with our memories? This habit forming happens in our bodies, in our minds, it happens in our hearts and our souls. So let me ask you this morning, how are you doing with that? What does remembering look like for you? How and what do you remember? How often do you call to mind the things of God? Because the more that we do that, the more that we can consciously and actively bring to mind God's faithfulness, his instruction to us, his promises, the more that's gonna be cemented into us. And you know, I might make mistakes as I'm playing, it might not be perfect, but I recognize that this is something I'm able to do much more easily than I used to. And may it be so with our memory. So just as Diana was talking about practicing and habit, and muscle memory, uh, that, that just takes commitment on our part. And it, it takes practice, and it takes one step in front of the other. So we, we just talked about why memory is important, and we talked about why uh, it's not good to forget, and it, and it takes effort to remember. So finally, we want to spend some time this morning uh, leading up actually to taking communion together, we want to slow down for a moment and we want to talk about how we remember redemptively. If you are a person of faith, if you are a person who seeks to follow after Jesus Christ, or if you are somebody who has doubts and questions and you would consider yourself a, speaker, a seeker or a skeptic, this is for you as well, because I think deep inside of us, all of us want to redeem our memories and remember well, remember redemptively. So Diana and I are gonna talk for a few moments about some, some ways that what she talked about on the keyboard and what she did as a young person in remembering, we do in our spiritual lives. So, um, Here's where we're going to start with this. We're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about symbols, and we're going to talk about traditions. So um, you don't have to turn there right now, although if you want to, you can. In Numbers chapter 15, I know we don't always read the book of Numbers regularly, but hang in there. Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 and 38 have these kind of odd verses, but I will explain them and why this symbol matters so much. So this is what Numbers 15 says. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You, you will have these tassels to look at so you will remember all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not turn away from God. Okay, what's he talking about? Well, this is what he's talking about. You see it today. 
This is called a talis in Hebrew, or a prayer shawl, that Jewish people wear at the synagogue. Jewish men wear at the synagogue. I grew up wearing this going to, to synagogue. Uh, this prayer shawl, and sometimes you'll see a Jewish person today who has like an undershirt on and he has tassels coming out of his shirt, wears it all the time. Okay, what is the purpose of this? Is it just cool? I always thought it was just cool for little kids to kind of play with when their granddad was standing there in the synagogue. No, no, no. It is, it is to fulfill this passage, that this symbol right here, these tassels, are to do one and one thing only, that we will remember the commands of the Lord and we will obey them. That this symbol is connected directly to our relationship with the Lord and to obey His commands. Now, after the time of Jesus, uh, that happens by His grace and by Him empowering us, by the Holy Spirit changing our hearts so that we can obey. We don't want to get into all sorts of legalism about this. But this symbol right here was exactly that. The purpose of remembering, that symbol brought us to remember the Lord, His commands, and to obey them. So that's the first symbol. Another one of the symbols that we think about a lot during this season, there are so many that we're surrounded by, especially at Christmas time. But as a worship leader, one of my favorite symbols that we think of in this time happens during our Christmas Eve services. And you may all be familiar with it. When we get to the end of our Christmas Eve services, we all come together and we each have a candle and we all light the candles together and sing a song and lift those candles into the air in a darkened room. And I can tell you there are a few things that I've experienced more reverent, more moving, more holy than that image of God's people lighting up a darkened room by the lights that they hold. And we do that not just because it looks nice or it's a fun tradition at Christmas time, but we do that to symbolize Jesus, the light of the world, coming in and breaking the darkness. So we remember what God has done and we hold them up in the hope that the light of Jesus cannot and will not and has not been overcome by the darkness. So that's symbols. And now a couple of traditions. So I'm sure at Christmas time we have all sorts of traditions. Uh, some are really powerful and important. Some are just kind of tried. Some have been commercialized. But we want to point out a couple, and uh, the, the first one Diana's going to share about is really kind of internal to Living Word, but it is incredibly, incredibly uh, powerful for us, and we've just experienced it. Yeah, so this tradition is one that we just celebrated a few weeks ago. Every year around Thanksgiving, we celebrate our Cardboard Testimony Sunday. And at that service, we all gather together and we just hear story after story of what God's been doing in people's lives and in the lives of our, our church community. And it's such a beautiful service. Again, it's so encouraging, but we don't just gather because it feels good to hear those stories. We gather because in doing that, we remember that God is working. We remember that he has been up to something good in the lives of our community. And we remember to stop and give thanks to him for the things that he's been doing. It's really powerful. So what traditions do you have that help you remember redemptively? It, it might be um, ringing the bell with the, the Salvation Army. Uh, it might be uh, singing Christmas carols together. Uh, I realize that during this season of the pandemic, those traditions are harder. They're more challenging. But all of us need these traditions in our families and individually. They tie us to God and they tie us to each other and they help us remember who God is, where we've come from, and, and gives us hope for the future. 